What makes a team good in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege? Just like in any other competitive game, the main goal is to win. So a good Siege team is one with a high capability of winning. So how do you win in competitive Siege? You play a match. If it's a best 3 out of 5, you need to win 3 games. If it's a best 2 out of 3, you need to win 2 games. If it's a best of 1, you need to win 1 game. How do you win a game? The first team to win 7 rounds wins the game. Unless you go to overtime. Overtime is triggered when both teams win 6 rounds before either other team is able to win 7 rounds. Under normal circumstances, you win in overtime by being the first team to win 8 rounds in the game. In the case of unlimited overtime, you must be the first team to win 2 more rounds than your opponent in overtime. So how do you win a round of siege? In a round of siege there are two sides, the attackers and the defenders. Each one has slightly different ways to win the round. Here I'm going to ignore cases where there is at least one attacker and one defender left alive in a round and something happens that causes all alive players to die, such as a trade, which is when two players kill each other at the exact same time. Also, to make the language easier to understand here, I'm going to assume that no players kill themselves or their teammates. So the only way a player dies is if a member of the opposing team kills them. There are three different things that can happen that cause the round to end and the attackers to win the round. 1. The attackers can kill all of the defenders at or before 0 seconds on the clock. The action phase of the game is 3 minutes long, so normally you'd have 3 minutes to do this, but if one of the attackers is planting the diffuser at 0 seconds on the clock, then the attackers will have up to an additional 7 seconds to kill all the defenders. 2. The attackers can kill all of the defenders after the diffuser has been planted. And 3. The attackers can have the diffuser planted for 45 seconds. The defenders also have 3 ways to win the round. 1. They can kill all of the attackers before the diffuser is planted. 2. The action phase can end with no attacker planting the diffuser. Again, the action phase can be extended by up to 7 seconds by one of the attackers being in the diffuser planting animation. But if they are planting at 0 seconds on the clock and they are unsuccessful in finishing the plant, they will lose the round. And 3. The diffuser is disabled. There are two possible ways for this to happen. One of the defenders can go through the 7 second diffusing animation. So assuming this animation lasts for exactly 7 seconds, a defender would need to start this at the latest while the diffuser has been planted for 38 or fewer seconds. Or, if the diffuser is planted on a hatch, the hatch below it can be destroyed. So there are only a handful of things that a player on either team can do to directly contribute to their team winning the round. They can kill members of the opposing team, an attacker can plant the diffuser, a defender can disable the diffuser, and a defender can survive the round. Technically, attacking players surviving the round doesn't directly contribute to them winning the round, but in all practicality it is a necessity for them to win the round, because the only way the attackers can win the round is by killing all the defenders or by having the diffuser planted. Their being alive can't cause them directly to win the round, but it is necessary for them to be able to complete the things that cause them to win the round. Disregarding gadgets that you place down before you die, you can't kill members of the opposing team if you're dead, and you can't stop the defenders from disabling the diffuser if you're dead. So if you look at it this way, it's very rigid what you need to do in order to win a round, but simply looking at kills, survival rates, plants, and diffuses won't paint the full picture of how good a team or its players are. There are other stats to help illustrate this. One of the most popular is known as cost, K-O-S-T, which stands for kills, objectives, survives, trades, and it's represented by a percentage. So it is the percentage of rounds in which you do at least one of these things. Get a kill, plant the diffuser, disable the diffuser, survive the round, or are traded. Traded in this case meaning a teammate kills the member of the opposing team that killed you shortly after they kill you. Other stats to look at would be kill death ratio, kill differential, opening kills and deaths, opening kill differential, kills per round, time alive in a round, etc. And if you were trying to measure how good an individual player is, or how high their impact is, you would need to consider a lot of non-numerical and therefore untrackable factors, like their mental game, their comms, their game knowledge, their ability to perform a certain role, to be able to play well with their teammates, and to enable their teammates to play well, things like this. But the original question was what makes a team good, not what makes a player good. So in future videos, I want to examine if there's any stat or combination of stats from teams as a whole that can be used to identify how good a team is or otherwise stated, how capable a team is of winning.